I built a computer from scratch. After placing 800 transistors and making more than 2000 wire connections by hand, I finally had this, a working computer. Why the hell would you even do all that? Just seems like a huge waste of time. Yeah, look, I get your point. This does seem kind of pointless. But in a world where computers can simulate real life phenomena with crazy accuracy and control machinery with atom wide precision, I feel like there's a lack of appreciation for what's going on under the hood. There was a time when the most capable computers we had were just massive calculators and now anybody can get a setup capable of running physics simulations and hyper realistic games. Yeah, I have a feeling we won't be able to run Red Dead on this bad boy. Nevertheless, I want to take you on a journey to show you how a simple switch became the greatest invention in human history. In this video, I want to walk you through what exactly you're looking at here. But first, you're going to have to understand the basic circuitry. A circuit is basically just a path that electricity can flow through. There are three main things you need for a circuit to work properly. One, a power supply. It supplies power to the circuit. Two, a conductor or wire that makes the loop of the circuit. And three, an output, something that actually does something useful with the electricity. If you connect these correctly, you get a complete circuit. But the interesting stuff happens when you add a switch into the mix. Remember I said we needed three things for the circuit's work? A switch breaks one of those rules. It disconnects the conductor. So when we turn the switch on, it allows us to control the circuit. And that's a very powerful concept. Controlling the output of a circuit. Okay, so what if you connect multiple switches in the circuit? Well, depending on the way you arrange the switches, you get circuits that can make decisions. Since making decisions need some sort of logic, then we can call these circuits logic gates. And I have something great to help you visualize this. This is a board I ordered from PCVWay, the sponsor of this video. PCVWay manufactures the highest quality PCBs at head scratchingly low prices, but there's more. They offer PCB assembly, 3D printing, and CNC machining services too. Head on over to PCVWay for the best quality PCBs, 3D prints, and CNC parts. A huge thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now let's look at the board they sent me. My god, it's absolutely impeccable. It genuinely hurts me how I ruined this board with my lackluster soldering skills. Oh, what's that? Why is the board so big? Because PCBWay lets you do what you want with your board. And a big PCB is just a status symbol. Oh, why didn't I put the buttons on the PCB? You're asking the wrong questions. Just lock in and listen. Here's the first circuit. It gives you the opposite of whatever the input is. So if the input is on, then the output is not on. If the input is off, then the output is not off. This is called the NOT gate. The second gate works with two inputs, and it only decides to turn the LED on if both inputs, A and B, are on. Let's call it the AND gate. The last circuit also takes in two inputs, and it turns on if either input, A or B, are on. It turns out that if you connect enough of these logic circuits, you can get some complex behavior, like a circuit that can add two numbers together, a circuit that can subtract two numbers, a circuit that can count, and hell, a circuit that can remember information. Okay, so how do we make all these circuits? Well, there's a beautiful story to be told for each of these circuits. They each deserve their own dedicated video for you to build that understanding and appreciation for their simplicity. So this video is to provide an overview to tell you what these circuits are and what they do, not how they work or how to build them. That'll come later. Okay, so where do we start? Well, a computer ought to be able to compute, right? Let's talk about the math it can do. So this beefy circuit here is the adder. It adds two numbers together, A plus B, and produces the result. This same adder can actually be used to also subtract B from A with some clever wiring. That's what the submux does. It either puts a B on the input of the other, or a negative B. This gives us the option to switch from addition to subtraction. You can already see how this can be used as a simple calculator. Now that's the beefiest part of the CPU because it's the heart of computation. Everything in computers is built around the arithmetic unit, as it determines how fast we can process data. Some more powerful computer designs have multiple arithmetic units and they design circuits that can feed them as much data as possible. Okay, so what's the A reg? The A register is just like a sheet of paper we used to jot something important down. It's a little block of memory and it can only hold one binary number at a time. Oh, so is the B register just another piece of paper? Well, the B register is also a block of memory, but it is different from the A register in the way they are built. Notice how the B register just takes one breadboard and the A register takes two. 
So the B register has some flaws that prevent it from being as good and useful as all reliable A reg. The CPU was 4 bits wide and that was because I didn't want to go bankrupt trying to build a practically useless machine. Can it run games? Well, this project was destroyed before I finished the control unit so I couldn't handle memory directly. I am building a better and improved version of the CPU though and that's why I'm starting this series. Why wouldn't you just use ICs? You can build something way more powerful and it would cost less. I could just go and watch Ben Eater's videos and I'll learn everything I need to know about computers. Ben Eater is great, he is, but there aren't many people making computers from scratch and if you're like me, it gets stale seeing the 97th IC CPU build. The only guy who attempted something similar gave up immediately. He built a program counter and that was it. I mean, he was also trying to build a 16-bit computer on par with the 6502 which is a different level of autism if you can complete that task. There are a ton of great projects, like this one from 3D Sage. I feel like this would be a great project to do a deep dive into, but I feel like they weren't explained in the best way. This project gave me a bunch of cool ideas but it has a whole load of flaws. My main complaint being it isn't really a textbook computer. So in this series we'll go over a normal CPU design, we will try and save transistors where we can, and we'll talk about a lot of useful functional units like the stack, interrupts, handling inputs and outputs, and we'll see what we can control from there.